Welcome to WXTV, your online source for weatherization training. In continuing on with our consumer education series, we'll take a look at some alternative energy options for homeowners, starting with solar. There are many different configurations for photovoltaics, like the pedestal array you see behind me, but we'll be teaming up with Michael Goldschmidt of the University of Missouri Extension, and he's picked out a very simple home application to highlight the basics of solar power. I'm Michael Goldschmidt with the University of Missouri Extension. And a lot of people ask us, what are good applications for alternative energy for existing homes? And what we see behind me are photovoltaic panels, which actually generate electricity from the sun. And those panels can run anything that you would plug into a wall from a washer, dryer, furnace, any kind of plug loads like a TV. And homeowners in this area and across the country can use these alternative systems. So I'm with Claire Garden now with the Terra Nova community in Columbia, Missouri, and we're going to talk about photovoltaic panels. How you doing, Claire? Just fine. Good. So Claire and her community here have installed solar panels on top of a roof that also acts as a carport. And you can see the carport behind me and see that we have a solar array. So Claire, why don't you talk about some of the reasons why your families chose to put these on that roof? Well, it, it makes a difference to us the kind of uh, carbon footprint we have. And so we're using life savings to make that change and to get off of the, uh, what is both coal and nuclear power here in Columbia. This is not a battery system. So uh, at every moment that it's producing, we get first choice to use it. And what we're not using goes onto the grid and uh, is shared with the, with the rest of the community. So I want to make sure our viewers are aware that this was an existing house in Columbia, Missouri. You didn't build a solar panel, so you have actually added those to an existing house. Yes, it was built in 1955, I think. When you installed these panels, the uh, carport was already built? No, we built the carport. Okay, so you built the carport to the right angle. Yeah, well, no, actually we didn't. We built it so that it would look good with the house okay. by being the same slope. Okay, so, but you, you say that that angle that you have is good for summer. Good for summer, but not good for winter because uh, the winter sun is lower, and so you need to have a steeper incline to be good for winter. Okay. But and unless you have it movable, you've got to choose anyway. So on, a, on the hot day or the hot afternoon of summer, it's doing its best uh, if it's not cloudy. And we're not using that much electricity because currently we do not have air conditioning in this house. We send more to the city than we use during the summer. Uh, over the whole year, that isn't true. Uh, it comes out a little less than what we use over the year because our uh, meter keeps track of what we have sent to the city and what they have sent to us. So let's talk about your specific panels. You have 10 panels up there. It's a 2000 watt grid interactive PV system. Okay, so it's a 2,000, 2000 watt, watt grid, so a two kilowatt system, which is uh, something average homeowners would have. Some larger houses would probably have a larger array. And as uh, Claire talked about, that if, if a person had air conditioning instead of the attic fan, they would probably need a greater system. So Claire was talking about that they have a two kilowatt system. And I want to point out that they have 10 panels. So each of these panels is about 200 watts a piece. So when you're designing a photovoltaic system for a home, you usually look at the electricity that the client needs. And if we can do all of it, that's great. If we can do a percentage of it, that's great. But what we usually look at is a utility bill for an entire month. And that's in kilowatt hours for the whole month. 
And so we can divide that by 30 days, look at the energy use for an entire day, and then you can look at the energy use for an hour. So for instance, you might have the dryer on, or you might have the stove and the dryer on. And so then we can look at the number of panels that would be appropriate for that type of house. And then we look at the roof area we have available and try to maximize the amount of solar panels. So if you have a lot of roof pipes going up or a lot of ventilators that may not work as well as say having a clean open roof. So what Terra Nova has done is provided a lot of free space on their garage to put these panels on there. You talked a little about that in the, the summertime you get more than you need and in the wintertime you use a little bit more. Do you have a total per year or you know are we at a certain percentage of your total energy use now? The total that had been generated by us was 4980 kilowatt hours and the total that we actually used was 5,438 kilowatt hours, which means that we generated 49 and used 54. Have you had to put any maintenance into it? Or when you had it installed, uh, did they talk about what, what's common maintenance on these solar panels? They, if they get dusty, they don't produce well. If they get too hot, they don't produce well. So sometimes it hoses them off, which okay. both cools them and cleans them. And of course, if they get covered with snow, they don't produce anything. And so right. he's had to climb up there and, and brush the snow off. Let's, uh, let's walk around and we'll actually look at parts of the system. Okay, so we'll work backwards from here. So what we're seeing here is the actual meter. And again, like we saw earlier today with the wind turbine, we can see that the um, meter here is connected directly to a system that will eventually go to the solar panel. So this is just the same um, meter that you would have in a house. And this is gonna give AC power, alternating current power, directly into the house. Now it flashes back and forth between delivered and received. Okay. And received means what they get from us. Delivered means what they give to us. Now, just so that all of our homeowners uh, understand this, um, Columbia is one of those places that we have net metering, which means the utility company is supposed to pay you approximately the same rate that you would pay for electricity from right. them. And has that been the case here? Yes. With your yes. Okay. So, so they're not really charging you more for their electricity no. than you're having them buy back from you. No, but the first solar system I had in Kansas, it was like that. <laughs> right, okay, that's good to know. Okay, so we're gonna walk around here. So what we're gonna look is underneath the carport here, we actually see a disconnect. And this is no different than any other system. The disconnect is very important. If the array has to be um, serviced or if there's a problem, we can turn that switch down and we can uh, basically turn off the power. So this is a safety measure that all of these systems have in common. And then what we see when we go past here, an actual inverter. Now the purpose of the inverter is to take direct current power and to convert it into alternating current power, which is what the, the type of electricity that most homes in the United States use. And so every system, whether it's on the inside of the house or the outside, would have that system uh, connected to the um, photovoltaic array. And then the wiring from that is going to go uh, into the photovoltaic system and then it's going to go it's down underground, yeah. underground basically to that meter. So it's a really simple system, does not require a lot of um, extra room. Now some of the photovoltaic systems we see in houses have a battery backup and a, a charge controller and you guys decided not to put that system right. in. Could you explain why you didn't put one of those systems in? Well partly because um, taking care of the batteries is a problem <laughs> right. and we didn't we just really didn't want to do that um, the advantage of having the battery would be you'd have electricity when the system goes down that didn't seem to us to be as important and not worth the extra trouble great and and as we should point out that since this is an existing house to put a battery backup system would require extra room like a closet and instead of taking up room in the house you decided that you could put it out here and uh, everything so far works fine. Yes. Okay. I'll show you uh, what the information that comes yeah, in on let's, my computer. Let's do that. Let's do that. So it, it says what, what the watt hour was that it were, were generated, the watt hours that were generated today, and how many hours of the day the sun was making it work, and then the total. For our viewers, this is an important part of uh, a wind turbine or photovoltaic array where it's a, a program for a standard home computer and it actually can show the amount of electricity is being generated. So besides the meter on the outside, this is a running total and you can look at it from a day-by-day -day, uh, instance. So as Claire was talking about earlier, sometimes you have to 
remove the dust or snow from the panels or you have to wash them down occasionally and this allows them to look at the weather patterns, the sunny days, the cloudy days, to make sure that they're getting the most efficient use out of their solar panels. So what we saw at Terra Nova was a photovoltaic system. And similar to this diagram, we can see the photovoltaic panels. And as we saw at Terra Nova, that it went to a disconnect, which is important because you can shut that down for safety if you have to maintain the panels so you don't get electrocuted. And then we saw that it went to an inverter. What we didn't see at Terra Nova is another possibility for homeowners. It can go through the charge controller, the wiring can go through a charge controller, and then to a battery backup system. The charge controller regulates the voltage and the amperage so that if there's a day when there's not a lot of sun, it's cloudy or there's snow on the roof like Claire was talking about, then we could store that power from a day when it was sunny to use for that cloudy day. So the charge controller regulates it so that it's not too high a voltage or too low a voltage, and then that power is sent through batteries. And these are car batteries. They look like car batteries, but they are special batteries for a photovoltaic system. And there's usually six or 12 or 24. So they will hold the power for when the power is needed in the home. And then the power, would, the electricity would go back into the inverter. Then the inverter is wired to the utility meter, just like we saw at Terra Nova on the wall uh, of the exterior of the house, just like you would see normally in your house. And then that could be sent to the utility company. In the case of Terra Nova, they were selling some of their elect electricity back to the utility company or to the wiring in the house, where it could be used to run their refrigerators or freezers or dryers or any of the other appliances that you would use in a home. Do you think that this type of photovoltaic system would be helpful to moderate income families? Do you think your average uh, viewer would probably be able to install this system in their house? I think we need to have some uh, greater incentives. There are cities in the country that allow you to put them up and then pay them off, and you don't have to come up with the down payment. Uh, that is something that they amortize over its life. Well, actually, nobody knows how long they last because I don't know that any solar panels have worn out yet, but I think that they amortize it over a, a 30, 20 or 30 year period. So if we could get that, yes, everybody could do it. And can you tell us approximately what the cost of your system was? Well, I can tell you just exactly what it was. It was uh, 22 eight thirty eight and 10 cents, but the city rebated a thousand. Okay. And the IRS credit at the time that we did this uh, was 2008. So the IRS credit was only 2000 then, now it's 30%. So the net ca cost was uh, 19838 about. But as Claire talked about, and we've heard this over and over today, is that is most of these homeowners are already weatherizing their home. We did that. Very energy efficient before they would even think about investing in this type of system. We did that. We had the energy audit for both houses and we did everything they told us to. Fantastic. <laughs> and that's good advice for every homeowner. Well, that's it for another episode of WXTV. Alternative energy options are evolving and improving every day. And some of the technology can seem quite daunting. So thanks to Michael Goldschmidt for showing us that it can really be quite simple for a residential application. And before we sign off, we've got some additional images of PV configurations for you to take a look at. And thanks for watching. For more information on the tax credits available in your area, visit the Database of State Incentives for Renewables and Efficiency, or DESIRE, at DesireUSA.org. WXTV, your online source for weatherization information, techniques, and expert advice.